My name is well, Pauline. I'm uh, I'm from Scottish Women's Institutes, and uh, I'm delighted to to uh, welcome you to tonight's SWI Evening Natter. It's the first in a new series for autumn, and uh, it's for the first in a series of three, and where we talk to the hottest um, stars and celebrities around, and uh, great people of Scotland. Uh, tonight is an evening with the wonderful Andy Crummy M MBE. Now, Andrew is a designer and a community artist who has the power to tell stories which are modern and historic, myth and fact. And his passion is bringing to life moving stories that are then shared and stitched all over Scotland. There are probably sitchers in the audience this evening. And I can see two of them, I think. Whether you, are added, you have added a stitch to any of uh, the tapestries that Andrew has been involved with or not, you will likely have seen his work. In 2010, the Battle of Preston Pan Tapestry began his journey, which now has 20 tapestries dotted all across the country. These include the Scottish Diaspora Tapestry, an award-winning cancer tapestry, which shows a thousand stories of cancer, including his own, and of course, the Great Tapestry of Scotland. We welcome Andrew to this, the first in SWI's new Evening Natter series. Thank you, Andrew. Hello. Hello to everyone. I'm Hello. Just gonna, I'm just going to get my uh, thing up the road on this thing. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. My my name, <clears throat> uh, just to go through the basics again, my, my name is Andrew Crummy. I'm a designer of various tapestries, and I'm going to take you through a, just a sort of a uh, 35 uh, Forty minute talk where I'll take you through various things that I've done, and um, then we'll have some questions at the end if if that's okay with you all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So so the title of my talk is drawing the tapestries of Scotland and beyond. Well, it would work if I can't get it to go for. Why is that? Sorry. Oh, there we go. So first, I'm going to tell you about my history, which, if it works, I don't know why it's. Um, oh, I've got a sort of slight thing. I've got a hiccup here. Are you, another, are you in another uh, time zone, Andrew? <laughs> no, no, I was pressing the wrong button. I know what the right button is. So, if 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 I first of all go back to um, a, a story, I'll tell you. Uh, it's a bit of a ramble, but it will it will all make sense in the end. So you have to bear with me a bit. So I was born in and about. Uh, uh, I was born in 1959, and so I'm in the pram, and my older brother, Philip, uh, who's 13, 13 years older than me, wants to learn to play the violin. So he he goes to the headmaster of the local school. And he says to the, the headmaster, uh, I'd like to learn to play the violin, to which the headmaster replies, um, we don't do music at this school because it takes us all the time to teach these poor kids uh, the three R's, mm. to which um, my mother and the local's mother's group were horrified that he said this. And... Over a period of time, my mother and this mother's group, instead of shouting at the headmaster, who in the end turned out to be a good guy, they said they came back to him and they said to him, we want to show you how talented our children are and we're going to put on a festival. Uh, to which he replied, um, I, 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 will, I, I won't do it for you, but I'll show you how to do it. So that started... The, the beginnings of what became the Craigmore Festival Society. And it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. And until um, in 1969, 18,000 people in a population of 36,000 people were part of this thing called the Craigmore Festival, where where basically the mother's group, uh, headed by my mum, said, um, MD wanted to, if you were creative, you could, do something in the festival. So you, they, they always said yes. It was always very positive. And lots of people came forward and wanted to help the kids and all that, all that came into it as well. 
And then in the 70s, uh, I sort of grew up where, where, my, where, my, where my mom was at the, the centre of this sort of pioneering organisation called the Kriegmiller Festival Society, where there was all these amazing people coming from all over the world to Kriegmiller to see how the, the so-called miracle had happened because it was beginning to transform people's lives and it was beginning to transform Craig Miller and beyond. And it's part of a, of, of a wider thing called the called the the, the 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 community arts movement. So I grew up with this in in, in the sixties and seventies, but I just I wasn't interested. So and and I didn't really click that this was important until later on in my life. But if you go back to Craig Miller now, you will see the statue in the centre of the, the regenerated Craig Miller of that, that story I've just told you, the story of the violin. And that sort of that sort of encapsulates actually a lot of the work that I've done and I'm going to talk about today. So it does sort of make sense and we'll come back to it. So I, I wasn't really interested in uh, community arts or what, what my mum was teaching me about anything, but I ended up going to art college because I couldn't do anything else. I think I couldn't get in the university. I joined the civil service. Um, I got put on three warnings because I kept falling asleep. It obviously wasn't for me. So I eventually ended up going to Dun Duncan and Jordanston College of Art at Dundee, really because that was the only thing I could do. I was good at drawing. I was good. At, I was good at painting. I wasn't that good, but I was good enough to get into art college. And I got to Dundee, and I had a great time, and uh, had. Four very happy years uh, learning to draw and paint, and, and I did the illustration and printmaking, which I really enjoyed. In the end, I really enjoyed. And then I went on to Glasgow School of Art and I did an MA there. And then I eventually ended up going down to London and I lived there for 15 years and I started off as an illustrator. And the first band I got involved with was uh, who published my first thing was Everything But the Everything But the Girl. And this was for the and this is my this is one of my drawings from the, the must my degree show, but eventually I ended up in their um, in their uh, songbook. So that was a great start for me. But uh, so I did the illustration. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed it, but then I ended up for for some reason um, another accident. My career has been a series of accidents, mm -hmm. happy accidents, and I ended up painting these murals for the Midland Bank. I painted thirteen of them around uh, the UK, and um, this is with one in Midland, uh, Middlesbrough, uh, and that was 140 feet long, 120 feet long and, seven, and 8 feet high, and I painted that in about 2-3 weeks, and I'd never done anything like this before, and I painted the history of, the, of Middlesbrough, but actually this was the beginning of me, beginning what would eventually end up be the Great Tapestry of Scotland, this sort of approach. So I did uh, over over. Uh, I mean, I still paint murals to this day, but um, uh, but uh, I've done about eighty large scale murals over many years, and this was one that went around the Scott Monument. Uh, it went, it went it, they kept taking it down, bringing it back because it was so popular, and it was about uh, it's about two hundred and odd feet long, and it tells the story of Edinburgh. Then I did the Museum of Scotland, and um, the the new extension at the top of Cham Chamber Street, and that, again, I painted that very quickly, and again, it was the history of, this was the first time I did the history of Scotland, uh, and it was about about 200 feet long, and that's two sections of it. If you go to Edinburgh today, uh, if you go into the, the, the Radisson uh, uh, Hotel up the Royal Mile, and you go into the Great Scots Room, you will see uh, the ceiling here, and I painted the ceiling with my cousin, Moe Mackay, who does felt paintings now, uh, we painted this in about 1992, and it's still there. So one day I, I was um, I, I was I was doing a mural with my friend Mark, and um, uh, it was a Sunday morning uh, just outside uh, just outside of a uh, 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 Bury a place called Radcliffe. And there was a pub right beside it, and there was all these people going in to drink this very toxic drink. And, and as they went in, they, they, they kept saying, oh, I hate more than that. Why are you doing this? Um, you're doing this for charity. You can't be getting paid for this sort of stuff, or words to that effect. Mm -hmm. And um, they, 
But then when they had had this toxic drink, they came. What well, this woman came outside, and I, and I was standing about about twenty feet away, and my friend Mark, whose painting was right beside the mural, and the, this drunk woman said, "Oh, can I put my name on it?" So she and Mark went, "Yeah, yeah, of course you can." And um, I was horrified of this. And anyway, she painted the name, and then she she thought that was great, so she went inside, and they, they all came out. About twenty of them all came out. They're all drunk, and they all put their name on it. And suddenly, they, they, they really liked the, the mural. They thought it was great. And they, and they looked after it once we'd left. And um, and that's when I realised that if you involve people in producing artwork, um, it, it, it can protect it, that people feel part of it. And I, I learned a lot from that. And from that, I really realised that my mother was right, that if you involve people in artwork, you can actually... It, it, it produces a different type of artwork, but can have lots of benefits to be quite powerful. So um, I did the 80 murals, I ended up teaching, I ended up a public art course in, in London, but then I, I met Carmel, my wife, and we got married, and Aoife was born, and we moved moved to uh, Kikenzi, East Lothian, where, where we live today. Um, our, both our kids are grown up now and uh, left the nest, but the... the um, it just so happened in, in 2000 that there was this... Uh, Baron, the Baron of Preston Grange, had been decided to paint these murals of the history of Preston Pines. And uh, so I just happened to move into the next village where where somebody in Preston Pines was spending not a huge amount of money, but was spending enough money to, to, to pay me to paint a few murals. And I ended up running the programme for 12 years. And this is one of my murals. And what was the, 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 the Kikensi power station site? The power station is now gone. And if you go into the goth in Preston Pans, you will, and you look up the ceiling, I painted that ceiling, and the goth is a great place to visit, and uh, because 95% of the profits go back into the community. So uh, Gordon, uh, for a period of time, produced this uh, a very magical set of events in, Pre in Preston Pans where all, all these different things started to happen. Um which I will come back to. But I'm also somebody who draws and paints. And so this is one of my uh, sunsets. I've, I've been painting sunsets for long years. And that's two of them in the local Three Harbours Festival this year. And also I do uh, drawing. Uh, I'm somebody who basically draws and paints. I, I wouldn't call myself a textile designer. And this is a thing that you can see online. It's just a very simple animation about, uh, about uh, Kikenzie Power Station site. It's on YouTube and the, it's uh, the, the links at the bottom of the page, which is a bit useless, but uh, you can get it on YouTube. You just type in the tail to chimney. So the tapestries. <clears throat> so Gordon, who who had lots of mad ideas and who who some of them worked and some of them didn't, he, he came back one day and he said to me when I was running the Mills programme, he said, um, I've just been to see the Bayou Tapestry, and I think we could do the Battle of Press and Pans Tapestry. Uh, do you think that's a good idea? And I said, oh, that sounds interesting. It's what he said to Gordon. And um, I went home, and um, I said to Carmel, oh, Gordon's got another really crazy idea. Uh, he wants me to design this tapestry on the Battle of Press and Pans. To which Carmel replied, well, I can stitch, uh, because my, my, my father-in-law... Campbell's dad, I, I taught him, I taught her how to stitch because he could stitch because when he was ill, he was in TB, he was in the hospital suffering from TB and the nuns had taught him how to stitch. So Carmel says, I'll stitch it for you. And then my neighbour, Kate, Kate Edmonds, she she got involved and this was the first sample of, of what became all these, about another 800 panels altogether various tapestries. So this is, this is a picture of the very first sample that was produced. The Battle of Preston Pans was a, was, was a great success and um, really sort of took us all by surprise, but it just, it just grew and grew and grew. 280 mainly women uh, uh, stitched the, the panels, uh, the, the, the Battle of Preston Pans tapestry. And this is a sort of classic photograph. I really like this photograph because I think it really sums up to this day um, it's mainly these, these 
women who stitch these tapestries, but what what they what they what they're doing there in this photograph is 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 probably Liz in the centre has brought her panel in, and she's un unrolled it, and these four four ladies have gathered round Liz, and they've they've all they're all inquiring, you know, how did you do that? Why did you do that? And then and so the big and so the, this great conversation starts and this great learning and enthusiasm starts and I think this is the essence of these tapestries it's about community it's about women and it's about learning and it's about uh, not just learning stitching but learning the history of Scotland and beyond so when the Battle of Preston Pants tapestry was unveiled it was it was it got an, it did get a lot of attention for a community arts project but its first uh, protocol was on its tour around the highlands of Scotland, all the way back to Preston Pans, was Eriskay uh, Community Centre, where Bunny Prince Charlie first uh, entered Scotland in Eriskay Beach. And we unveiled it in the community centre, and not that many people were coming in. <clears throat> and then, about four or five o'clock, they moved the tapestry back to the wall, and uh, it began to fill up. And then, all these kids came in, dressed up, and then these musicians came in, and the act, and then the place was absolutely full. And these these school children did the Highland dance of the, the of the Battle of Preston Pans. Some of the, some of the the children were dressed as as you see here, Jack, Jacobites, and the the rest were the red coats. And then there was beautiful Highland music to, to tell the story. So it was a Highland dance, and that's when I learned that, that the tapestries weren't just about the stitching; it was about community, but it was also about other forms of art that can be performed in front of the tapestries. So the, the in the Dovecot uh, studios uh, a few months later, Alexander McCall Smith, who's in this picture, came in and he saw it and he was completely blown away by it. And he eventually he said to me, he phoned me up two days later and he said, could you do the Great Tapestry of Scotland? And I've got Alistair Muffet, the historian involved. And so, and I said, well, as I always say, that sounds interesting. But in my head, I thought that's a bit of a jump from a 15 minute battle to the whole history of Scotland. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, that, so we started on that journey. And this is Trisha Marwick, the presiding officer, and Alexander McCall Smith putting the first stitch into the tapestry in about 2011. So when uh, the Great Tapestry of, of Scotland, which involved uh, mainly a thousand uh, women uh, and a few men, but when we unveiled it, this is what I looked the night before in, in the Scottish Parliament. The Scottish Parliament were always interested in, in, in launching uh, uh, Premier the Tapestry. And in fact, what they said to us was, Andy Warhol's going to be on during the festival. So that's obviously the big exhibition. You'll come in on the 3rd of September, just after the festival, so it'll be a bit quieter. Um, little did we know that the next day, this was what, what was to happen. Mm. But every single day for the first week, there was 5,000 people a day coming to see the Great Tapestry of Scotland. You had to queue up for two hours to get in to see the tapestry. We just did not expect this. Just an extraordinary experience. And this is a sort of typical photograph from from one of these days. You just some days you just couldn't move them out. People coming to see it, but then it toured. Went to Stirling uh, Castle, uh, uh, and again it was really busy. And then it went it went all around Scotland, and the same thing happened everywhere it went. It just was got, it got an extraordinary yeah. amount of attention. So much so that. Um, in 2022, um, 2021, uh, or 2022 rather, the, the Great Tapestry of Scotland opened in a bespoke £7 million building in Gala Shields. And if you'd said to any of us when we first started this, mainly um, uh, Dory Wilkie, the chief stitcher, would be the main one to say, like me, we, we just didn't know, we, we didn't, we never thought we'd be, be able to stand in a building bespoke, uh, completely made up for this tapestry. So it's this is a, a shot of the main room. 
and this is the building itself. And um, there's been lots of attention about about it. There's been it's been on the radio. It's been on various things. But this is a really nice statement from Neil McGregor, Neil McGregor, who used to be the director of the British Museum, and he was making a radio documentary about um, about museums and museums that make us. And he said this really nice statement, and I think this is a, to to get this endorsement from Neil McGregor. I think it's a real tribute to everyone involved, but also I think it it just really sums up. So I'm going to read it here. A magnificent storied space, as you will have noticed, I was impressed and enthused. A real people's history that has humour and pathos, erudition and wit, and where in every panel you feel the presence and the engagement of the makers. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it, certainly not on such a scale. Many congratulations. So I just thought it was an amazing statement to get. Also, a year later, uh, Alistair Marr with Alistair Muffet came to uh, look at the tapestry and there's a, a, a documentary online that you can you can get to see this of Andrew Marr walking around the TV presenter and journalist uh, walking around um, enjoying the Great Tapestry of Scotland and Alistair tells some really nice bits of the stories so it's a really nice half hour uh, video you can watch so drawing the tapestry Tapestries. That's my role in these tapestries. I'm not a stitcher. I, I, I don't say I'm a textile artist. Um, but um, at the moment in the at Gala Shields until the 22nd of October, because the exhibition has been extended, there is an exhibition of my drawings. And I did a lot, an awful lot of drawings. I did sketches. I did A4 drawings and I did full size drawings. And if you go in, you, you'll get a sample of, of, of these drawings with some music that I was listening to while I was um, drawing the tapestries in my studio. Uh, and I, hopefully it'll, it gives the, the feeling, the, the, the emotion that I was trying to get when I was drawing these. Uh, I, I, I find music really inspiring when I'm, when I'm drawing uh, artwork because it can just get me into the right mood. And this is... Um, these are just some of the. It's a there's a it's a projection onto a wall, so the drawings are really huge in the room, which is fits in with me because I'm a mural painter. So, and then in the exhibition space, there's some of the full scale drawings on the wall, which is the first time they've been shown in thirteen years, and that shows you my input into this project and and what I worked out and what I left. The spaces that are left for the stitchers to hopefully fill and also they would change my drawing they would question everything oh, well, i'll come on to that in a minute so at the back of there there's the the parliament of ancestors drawing and there's a a, a maquette i've made for a possible sculpture outside the building and also <clears throat> i've gone on to do prints and other drawings which are on my website and that's there You'll notice a lot of them are about these drawings are about women because, in the end, it's they, they are a they, they are they are a homage to the stitchers. Without the stitchers, who are mainly women, there would be no tapestries. And I think it's their, in the end, it's the stitching and the creativity that is the most attractive thing. This is a drawing for the Scottish diaspora tapestry that I did a print of that. And also I've got a colouring book, <laughs> which uh, shows you my, my drawings. So, the out of out of the great tapestry of Scotland in the Battle of Preston Pants has come a whole series of other tapestries. Um, as as I said, it's about eight 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 hundred ish drawings that I've done for various projects. So I'm going to just quickly go through those, and I'll give you. A, a, an idea is that hopefully we're going to launch this in the beginning of December, a charity which will be called the Scottish Tapestry Trail, which will begin to show you the, the scale of what's happened. So this is a photograph of the Battle of Preston Pans launch day uh, in uh, 27th of July um, 2010. And that's the Brash family who did one of the, did one of the panels. 
This is the Craig Miller Tapestry, which has, I think, we're about 21 panels now. Um, and we've got 13 of them completed, telling the history of Craig Miller. And you'll notice again the violins in there, because when my mother, just before my mother passed away in 2011, um, we decided that we were going to do a Craig Miller Tapestry, because the, the idea of these community arts tapestries, for me, really comes from Craig Miller. I've also done a tapestry called the Scottish Diaspora Tapestry, which involved 30 countries around the world. Um, 300 and I designed 307 panels, so there's about 300, I think, 11 now. And these were involved stitches all around the world, telling stories of the diaspora. I mean, that's a massive subject, and we only scratched the surface of that. Um, so this is it, the, 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 the Scottish Diaspora Tapestry has toured, has actually toured the world once. And, um, and, and there's a whole amazing stories to tell of that, which I can't really tell today because it's a subject now on its own right, as all these tapestries are. But this is um, when it was displayed at Westminster Hall beside the British Parliament. And I happened to have uh, had throat cancer on the week that it was there, and I was getting chemo treatment that week, and I saw there'd been an attack on the the British the Parliament, and and I thought, oh, oh my God, the, the the tapestries in the Westminster Hall, and in fact, what had happened was the all the MPs and all the staff and that had to all they had to all gather in Westminster Hall. So, uh, but I viewed it all from the in the day centre, uh, the West End, uh, and, and the cancer unit. So, strange story, but there you go. So, the other one is the uh, the Declaration of Arbroath Tapestry. Uh, this is uh, in Arbroath Abbey Visitor Centre. We started off with a, a very small idea with, with Linda Walker. Uh, the, and eventually, the, the, they were redoing, uh, they were the visitor centre and so this is now sits there in private place uh, stitched by about 15 ladies from around about our booth and the, the wooden frame is made by angus ross and the little bit of wood at the very bottom you'll see which is housed between these sort of two wave shapes is actually called the from the what's called the bruce's tree apparently planted by Robert the Bruce and was uh, burnt down a few years ago but they retrieved a bit of the wood and it's now within that tapestry. It's beautiful gold work. Uh, again, so many stories attached to this uh, uh, tapestry. You can, you can go, if you go on the web page, you can go to the page in it and you'll see there's actually a documentary about it as well. This is the Clack Manishire tapestry. Uh, that's some of the stitchers there. Uh, again, an amazing bit of uh, uh, embroidery skill. Uh, I mean, I, I just cannot appraise these these women enough for what they do and how they work together. Uh, it's extraordinary, and this is and again. This has got this is in the Alawa Visitor Centre, which was getting built at the time, so that's got a home as well. There's also I think called the Mount Felix Tapestry, which which is not really much to do with, with Scotland, but it, it actually was about Gallipoli and uh, the the Anzac Army. And the New Zealanders who were all in the often called the Mount Felix Hospital in Walton on Thames. And the tapestry is really tells the story not of Gallipoli but of, of eight love stories about the about the men who were wounded at Gallipoli and who then married the nurses used at Mount Felix Hospital and their families that came after that. So out of Gallipoli came the what the the was good things came out of that. If you go to Aberdeen, the the, the Gordon Highlanders Museum, there's three an amazing um, tapestries about World War One. The tartan, in in particular, is an amazing bit of stitching. It is beautifully stitched all over, but the standard of the stitching generally is very very high. But um, but that but the kilts are extraordinary. There's also an ongoing project. It's called Telling the Stories of Aberdeenshire, which we've currently got seven panels up and running. 
There's also a panel in the Scottish Parliament which accompanied the Great Tapestry of Scotland and that's got 10,000 people put a stitch into that and there's a book with all the names in it. Uh, and that's recently gone into the public area of the Scottish Parliament again to be viewed. This is the, the, the Scottish Midwives panel, um, which was stitched by a group of retired midwives who went around most of the hospitals in the Scotland and got most of the midwives of Scotland to put a stitch into this. So e even that is a story in its own right, and Princess Anne put the final stitch into that. This, uh, this is in Kirkcaldy Museum, which is the Kirkcaldy panel, which again, uh, a fabulous bit, bit of stitching headed by Dory Wilkie and um, uh, tells the story of Kirkcaldy. There's also the Mount, uh, the Renfrewshire Tapestry, and this is um, this uh, tells the some of the famous people that have come from uh, Paisley, so um, including David Tennant, Paolo Nantini, Ross Logan, Mary Black, Jerry Rafferty, John John Byrne, Thomas Coates, and Jared Butler. But there's about fifteen panels in that. It, that looks amazing too. And there's one of the panels here. There's also a thing called the, which is uh, the Tapestry for Europe, that's one of the panels, and that's Francis Gardner, who's stitched most of that, not all of it, there's a group of ladies who've stitched that, and that's uh, three panels at the moment. There's also the, which Susie's here, and she'll recognise this, this is the, the Inter Gala Shields Interchange panel, and that's Fiona Hislop, the Minister for Transport, putting the final stitch in a few weeks ago. And that is, uh, launched about just just about two weeks ago in the the glass the Gala Shields interchange, which is the rail and bus station, beautifully stitched by Susie and two thousand people all together put helped Susie to to make this. And there's Susie in the middle, and then some of the stitchers who came to to the launch. Um, uh, just uh, it's uh, amazing to be able to get a piece of artwork into a train station. I think. It's really, I think it's really innovative and different, and I think hopefully it, this idea will develop. And there's, I just wanted to show a bit of uh, Susie's amazing stitching when she was uh, the Shepherd's Plat here, which she stitched, which is phenomenal. And there's the tapestry itself, which really is about Gala Shield, but it's also about the, the, the rail route to uh, Waverley Station. So the Cancer Tapestry is. Um, I got cancer in two. I was diagnosed with cancer in two thousand and seventeen. Went through treatment, and when I was um, getting chemo, this doctor phoned me up, uh, Rod Mountain, and said, "When you get better, um, you could do a cancer tapestry." And I thought, "Oh my God, this guy thinks I'm going to live. Never mind about doing a tapestry." But anyway, I did survive, and we now have six panels up and running, and we've got a lot more uh, going on, and we've got more panels coming, and we've. We're, we're in the middle of a tour at the moment, and I'm just going to show you some of that as well. And the idea is to gather a thousand stories of uh, cancer, which we're well on the way to getting now. Um, this is the Dun this was done in Dundee, beautifully stitched again, another fantastic uh, bit of stitching. Like so many of these panels, many of these stitchers are artists within their own right and should be celebrated. And I think hopefully that will be one of the aims of this tapestry trail, that we can highlight the importance of these stitches and what they can do. And it's just a great photograph of one of Heather Swinson's, I think, nieces putting a stitch into the cancer tapestry. And there's my wife in this photograph, standing beside it, Carmel, with her group. Um, uh, this is a song group. Who, who did a panel for the Cancer Tapestry. My wife's got the red shoe, by the way. And then this is the Macmillan uh, Cancer Support, a very kindly supported uh, uh, this project and also uh, supported a documentary. And this is them beginning to put together, that's just beginning to gather the stories through the, the Macmillan panel, which will hopefully will have 100 stories added to this panel. I just these are just nice photographs 
showing how, how these projects work. There's also a documentary which has won two awards, uh, or one award, and it's shortlisted for another one. Uh, and that again is online. You can get to see that is a. It's not for everyone seeing this. It can be quite difficult at times because it's about cancer, but also it's. I think it's very touching and moving the stories that are told um, in this tapestry. And John Gill's done a fantastic job. And there it is in Aberdeen at the Healing Arts Conference, where we were talking to people from the World Health Organization and universities from the states. And it's also a panel getting produced in Dukes in Dunbar. Uh, uh, there's uh, sessions every month uh, in Dukes in Dunbar, West Barn. Uh, the next exhibition for the Cancer Tapestry is Dunblane Cathedral at the end of this month. And then it'll be at the v &A for the Can Do Cancer Conference at the beginning of November. There's also the Alamuir Tapestry, which is in Oxgang. So again, this tells the, the stories of Ox gangs and the surrounding communities. There's also right beside it. There's the George Watson's Ladies School, who are doing uh, this, the 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 story of the of of the Ladies School, not George Watson's School, the Ladies School. And this is them beginning the project a few years ago, and this is as it stands. Just a few weeks ago, they're stitching. It's really coming on. It's held back a bit because of COVID, but it's really beginning come together now. Uh, what's going to happen next year is going to be a, a, another big tapestry. It's going to be launched in Inverness called the Highland Tapestry. This is the drawing, one of my drawings for that. And that's uh, it's involved, this project involved 560 stitchers from around the Highlands. This is always just one of the groups. And then you've got Kirsty Campbell, who's the, the chief stitcher, who's sitting there at the front near to me, sitting down with the with the uh, uh, spotty black uh, shirt blouse, uh, and this is the this is when we we uh, finished it last year, and that was the head of the council, and that's just a few of the panels, and that's all being framed up now, ready to go next year. Also, in the Battle of Pinky Tapestry, um, that's uh, on its second panel now, which is newly finished. Uh, this is just a nice shot of it being. Uh, sung, I, I, I like things that's where a group's a dementia group is singing in front of it. Uh, so I just think it's nice that a tapestry can get so can very quickly become part of the community. Oops. There's a little bit of uh, singing there just to show you what it's like. And then um, that's the, the tapestry, which has all these stories of muscle bar around it, all stitched by different people. The Dundee Tapestry, which was a great success this year in the V&A, uh, got 96,000 visitors. It's uh, so much so that it's coming back at the beginning of November for the V&A for a, a much longer run. Uh, and we're adding two new panels to the Dundee Tapestry. So it's just a couple of them. Just amazing, amazing amount of stitching again. And that's how it looked last year, but it will look different this year but it will be up again in a few weeks. And finally, I did um, a, COVID tap, a, a COVID panel, which is woven, which is slightly different, for uh, where I had to work with uh, COVID, the Scottish Bereaved COVID group. So I had to create an image that reflected how they felt about COVID. So again, a very difficult subject, but uh, and that, is, that goes around with the COVID inquiry, and I think it's down in London just now. So I very much believe, uh, if you go back to my mum and to my festival society, they wrote a song, 1972, and the chorus line, history will be made when the people play their part. And I very much believe that uh, that's what these tapestries are about. And this is my that's that favourite uh, picture of mine, that story, um, uh, giving instruction there to, to, to three stitchers. Uh, they're taking notes, they're taking it very seriously, but they're also, um, they, they want to learn how to stitch, but they also uh, want to uh, talk about the the history, and they often double check things that me and Alistair had added or whatever, and um, it, it, I just think that's a, a, a really, again, sums it up for me.
And this is just a small section of the Great Tapestry of Scotland. Um, and within that small section, there's about 16 different stitches, just to show the different the level of creativity that goes into the stitching. I cannot stress enough. It's amazing. There are so many stories to tell. There's so much to tell of the impact that he's made. I still feel that we're just at the beginning of it, and there's so much more to explore. Uh, last year, uh, I got awarded an MBE, and so the, on the day before this event, well, I was awarded the MBE, so I was wearing it the next day, and then King Charles and Queen Camilla came the next uh, that day to open the Great Tapestry of Scotland building in Gala Shields. And this is the final panel, which is all the same from the Scotch Diaspora Tapestry. And I just think this sums up what the tapestries are about. It's about making friends, it's about community, and also how complicated Scottish history is. If you take the if you take the, the old Lang sign, uh, Robert Prince didn't write it for Hogmanay. It it was sort of became associated with 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 Hogmanay because a guy called Guy Lombardo, Guy Lombardo started playing it in the thirties on the radio in the radio in New York. That was then picked up by the, the film It's a Wonderful Life, uh, where it was it's the final scene, almost the final scene in that film. Um, and that's really what it made it into a much bigger event. And also around the world, in Japan, it's used for closing the stores at night when they close at three o'clock in the morning. It's also a classical piece in in China and India. It's also it was the Korean national anthem and it is a football chant for the Dutch football side. So there you go. That's my talk.